You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts here with my friend and co-host, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, how are you? Good, Wendy. How's it going? Uh, it's it's going great. You know, another day in paradise. <laughs> Of course it is. <laughs> uh, well, this week we are talking about the spine and it is more than just a stack of bones, y'all. So we are going to talk about the importance of the spine. We're going to talk about the different portions of the spine when we're actually talking about the cervical versus the thoracic and the lumbar. And um, I think it's going to be a really good podcast, Ken. I'm excited. Yeah. And uh, when you and I first started talking about recording this episode, it was it was basically coming from a conversation I had with a client, as a lot of our conversations or topic selections do. Um, a conversation with the client in that, you know, we're talking about the workouts and how they're feeling and we're talking about their back. It's like, yeah, I felt a little tight in my back. And the natural inclination is to think, okay, he's talking about his low back. But then when he started to point, he was actually starting to point, you know, over the shoulder and towards the mid back. So it wasn't the typical, oh, I got low back pain. He was talking more like a mid back tightness. It wasn't, it wasn't even a, a pain situation, but it's, it's one of those things when we look at the spine and the structure of the spine, it's natural to assume if someone's talking about issues with the spine, they could be talking about the, the neck, you know, that that five o'clock, uh, I've been in front of the computer for too long, or that, you know, that low back tightness you get when you have been sitting down or not moving enough. Um, but we don't really think about the spine and the fact that even though they were just talking, it's one word, it it's made up of different sections and each one of these sections has a different need. So if we're going to truly feed the spine what it needs to move and operate well for what that section of the spine does, then, you know, we have to take different approaches to how we look at how we take care of the spine and, and spine health. Well, and I, I love that you sent over a quote from Socrates, right? And it was, um, if you would seek health, look first at the spine. So that says a lot. And I think, you know, too, one of the things that, that, you know, we as master instructors and a part of NASM is we talk about the importance of the spine so much, but it seems like so many other people are worried about how they look and, and the muscles and everything that you see. But guys, the muscles that protect the spine and support the spine and keep us in the correct positioning are key in order for us to feel better, move better and perform at the highest level. And I feel like I say that every podcast, but it really holds true. And to your point, you know, Ken, we don't really, we take it for granted until we start to feel aches and pains. And then we see the severity that it could lead to if we're not careful. And I know in previous right. podcasts, you know, I've said that I've had neck and like issues. And I know we're going to talk about, you know, sprains and strains and bulging discs and stuff. But I literally was told that I was going to have to start fusing my spine together because I had a bulging disc that was getting ready to, to blow and all these things are going to happen. And I looked at myself and I looked at my spine and I thought all of these things that were contributing to the issues that got me to that point, I could reverse because it wasn't too late. And, you know, and I never had surgery. I still have everything that I'm, I was born with. I still have. And so, you know, I think it's important, too, when we talk about this, we, t we really start talking about how to protect and strengthen the muscles of the spine or that surround the spine, it's very important because you can make a difference on how you feel um, if you just take the time and dedicate, um, you know, small, simple movements that can make a huge difference. Huge yeah. difference. Yeah. Uh, and again, it, it with, with that situation that you're experiencing, it is, you know, you have to treat that area of, you know, that upper spine different than another area. So if we, if we take a closer look and just, for those of you that aren't, you know, that into learning about anatomy and physiology, just to give you an example or to give you an idea of, of what goes into the spine. If we talk about the top of the spine, uh, the cervical spine, we are talking about uh, seven vertebrae, right? That goes basically into the base of the skull and into the top of the shoulders, right? So you have seven cervical 
vertebrae, vertebrae, say that 10 times fast. And then below that, you have your thoracic spine, which is made up of 12 vertebrae. So we have our cervical, then our thoracic. That's pretty much going to be what's along the along the, the same length of, of your rib cage. And then we have below that our five lumbar vertebrae. So this is what we would typically call our low back area. And then below that, you have your sacrum, which is now part of the pelvis. So when we talk about you know, again, as Wendy mentioned in previous podcasts, when we talk about different segments of the spine, um, your your sacrum is a part of the pelvis, which we would consider a part of the lumbopelvic complex. So it is a region of the body that we we've, we've talked about in in podcasts past. But just to put it simply, you have your seven cervical, twelve thoracic, five lumbar, and then your your uh, sacrum and your coccyx down. Yeah part of the lumbopelvic hip complex. So if you understand that as a column of, of vertebrae, basically from your from your skull down to uh, your pelvic region, that's what we would consider the spine. Yes, and today on Random Fit, Wendy Batts, Ken Miller are talking about the spine and it is more than just a stack of bones. I mean, Ken just went through each region of it, but guys, it's important to think about when, when we're talking about, let's start at the, the cervical spine that you just said, Ken, there are certain parts of your spine that you want to be mobile and certain parts that you want to be stable. And so, you know, when you think about it, everything does have to move. So we're not saying that it's like a stick and then things that move all around. I mean, there are movements and motions at each component of the spine, but some should move more than others. And for example, when you're looking at the cervical spine, it should be more stable. And when you're looking at the thoracic spine, it should be more mobile and then again, more stable in the lumbar spine. So it's kind of like if you're just doing it quick, think stable, mobile, stable. But unfortunately, in our thoracic spine, that should be mobile because we are stuck in that forward positions. We're on the computer all the time. We have a forward head. We get stuck in these, these poor postural positions based on life and what we're doing daily and not correcting ourselves and our posture. Again, sit up straight, keep your head back, You know, looking nice and, and perfect. When we don't do that over time, then we kind of get locked into bad positionings, which means we have to get more ability or, you know, get our movement from areas that should be more stable. And that's when we start to hear about some of these issues. And that's exactly what happened to me. And so I, you know, I, I work full time on the computer. I mean, yes, I am also a trainer and yes, I do teach for NASM, but a majority of my time is spent on the computer. And if I'm not careful, I ended up locking myself down in the thoracic spine and ended up trying to get more mobility through my cervical spine. And that caused some issues. And, you know, in between each little bone that we're talking about. So, again, we're talking about the cervical spine. It's more than just a stack of bones. In between there, there's also those cushioning discs. And if you start to, you know, get yourself in bad positions, then the muscles that protect those the spine and keep you lined up perfectly are not lined up the way that they're supposed to be. And then they start compressing on those discs. And that's when we start to lead to other issues. So, so what, what you're talking about, Wendy, when you talk about that mobility, stability, the changing roles of the different segments of the spine, that's a concept that was brought up by Gray Cook and Mike Boyle. And it's one of those in a conversation they were, they were discussing different roles that different joints have in the body. So, as the body goes, you have alternating roles and responsibilities um, of alternating mobility, stability, mobility, stability, mobility, stability. So to look at the spine, as you said, Wendy, you have a stable lumbar spine, but below that you have the hips, which should be mobile. And mm -hmm. so again, things that we've talked about in past uh, recordings of Random Fit. Uh, we, we in talking about hip issues, low back issues, uh, something that I like to quote from our friend Anthony Carey down in San Diego is what the hips lack hurts the back. And and to again give you a deeper perspective of what that means as far as alternating mobility, stability is that if the hips are immobile, which, as you pointed out, Wendy, you're sitting down behind the computer, hips are flexed, you're sitting on your bottom right? The, the glutes go, you know, the glutes go to sleep. The, you know, the, those hip flexors are trying to help keep you upright. So mm -hmm. we develop these, these imbalances. But what happens is that by sitting down for an extended period of time, the hips get more and more and more 
immobile. Well, if we have to go from A to B, there there's still that demand of mobility from the hip. But if the hip doesn't get it, where do we have to get it from? Right. This is where you you know steal from Peter to pay Paul when it comes to the lumbar spine. And in that saying, now the lumbar spine has to do the work that the hips mm -hmm. are missing. Right. Yes. So you're you're having the lumbar spine do mobility work when it's designed for stability. And then that's where the excess stress comes into play. And when people talk about low back discomfort, I mean, there's over 80% of the, the population is going to have low back discomfort at some point in their life. And you've got to take a step back and look at what it is that, that allowed you to get there. And oftentimes, you know, if, if for me, if I'm evaluating myself or I have my husband evaluating the way that I walk, you know, you can look at someone's just the way that they stand. And if your feet are slightly turned out, like you said, you know, can that affects everything from the, the bottom of your foot all the way to the top of your head? Like everything really is interconnected within our body. And so if the feet are turned out, then what that also does is change what's happening at that at the hip. Like, just like you said, and then things that should, you know, be stabilizing and moving and, you know, prime movers, things are shifting in their job requirements because, you know, the prime movers aren't working the way that they're supposed to. But, you know, you've got something called your piriformis and it's a very small muscle. We make a joke like the enormous piriformis, but it's really not that big. And if your, your feet are turned out, it can affect everything. But that also attaches to that sacrum, which you just said is, is the bottom part basically of the spine. And, you know, if those muscles get tight, your your sciatic nerve can run through it or beside that one muscle. And if it gets tight, it can cause impingement and discomfort. Well, then it starts to lock down that sacrum. And as you start to flex and extend and move side to side, it should actually slightly move with you. And if certain muscles start locking that one particular bone down and it doesn't give you the, the, the ability to flex and extend the way that it's supposed to, then it really does start affecting your lumbar spine. And then you're putting a lot of you're trying to get mobility now from things that should be more stable, like you just said. And so then again, if you don't get it there, it's going to keep working its way up. And that's, you know, that's working the bottom all the way to the top. And so, you know, I literally had to reevaluate what was going on at my foot when I started having issues at my neck, because I know that the way that everything is interconnected. And when you start to piece everything together, it starts to make sense. But, you know, if you have low back pain, start looking at your, your, your foot and ankle and how are you standing? How are you seated? What are you doing to stretch yourself out during the day? Because it will start to affect your spine long-term. Yeah, definitely. And, and part of that's part of that equation, Wendy, you started talking about the neck. I jumped down to the low back uh, but you know what we have to look at again is that that pelvocular reflex too. That's that's the position of the hip affecting the position of the of the head, neck, and shoulders, right? So if I've got more tilt in the hip, that's going to promote more extension through my cervical spine. So looking at the lumbar spine, looking at the lumbopelvic hip complex relative to what you brought up in the beginning of this podcast. Um, you know, of, of the cervical spine, you know, one is going to affect the other. So this is a case where you have to look at the bookends because whatever's in the middle, unfortunately it's, it's sandwiched and it doesn't have all that much room to go as far as, okay, what the neck does and what the lumbo pelvic hip complex does to pre or preposition what's happening in the middle. So when you talk about sitting behind the computer, hands on the keyboard, eyes looking at the screen, you know, we are talking about that upper cross syndrome or basically it's that posture where you're as as a thoracic, not, not to look at the middle, the middle child, the ignored middle child. But the, <laughs> the thoracic spine, again, doesn't get talked about a whole lot because, OK, if you have neck problems, you're going to talk about it. If you have low back problems, you're going to talk about it. But unfortunately, that that little middle child, that thoracic spine oftentimes gets ignored. But when we, again, going back to the alternating mobility stability model, the thoracic spine is supposed to be mobile, but if the neighbor above and the neighbor below are locked down, well, guess what's going to happen to the thoracic spine? It's not going to have the mobility you need to do all the things you want with the shoulder blade as well. You know, the, 
the, the scapular thoracic as well as the glenohumeral joint. So we're talking about the shoulder blades relationship with the rib cage, as well as the upper arms relationship with the rib cage and the shoulder blade. So if this isn't doing well, as far as the cervical spine goes and the lumbar spine isn't doing well, well, neither is that, that middle section of the spine or the thoracic spine, but they all go hand in hand. And an example that I like to give my clients, you know, when it talks about the importance of rotation. So if I'm working with a golfer or a thrower and rotation is going to be a big part of what they do for their activity. Um, if you're listening to us, just imagine you're putting your arms across your shoulders and I want you to slouch like you point with your arms across your shoulders. Your elbows are going to point down at your thighs. And I want you to turn left to right and observe how much turn you're going to get turning right, turning left, observe your end ranges of motion. Now let's change just one thing. Keep your hands on your shoulders, but now get your chest up. As when he said, sit up straight, bring your chin in, bring your head back. The only thing that's different now is that you are now standing taller. Maybe you're an inch or two taller. Now turn to your right. Now turn to your left and see and feel the difference as far as how far you're able to turn. And that is the magic of getting better rotation. It's just by giving those thoracic vertebrae enough room so that they can rotate. And being flexed and being stooped over is going to take away from that. So, so again, looking at the neck, looking at the low back, we also can't ignore what's happening at that middle portion of the spine. Again, you have seven cervical vertebrae. You have five lumbar vertebrae but you have 12 thoracic so there's a lot more a lot more bones a lot more segments that you can get a lot out of especially that part of the spine yes and i think you know it's also important too when you're talking about you know first of all great example and i mean we actually do that as one of our mobility assessments we want to see how are people moving and i know often in in the gym when i have clients doing something like you know, a pal off press, which is basically they're standing there and they're extending their arms out. I want to see, can they control, you know, their, their spine and their core and their movement without, you know, against, against, you know, like um, a pull. So some sort of pull um, against that, can I maintain proper positioning? Then I say, okay, add slight rotation, but I don't want you to move the hips just to see if they can differentiate different body parts. And it's, it's mm -hmm. amazing to me oftentimes that they can't is they all they kind of move as one unit. And, you know, sometimes there's a time and place for that, but other times you want to be able, like you said, you need to rotate. You want to have movement and mobility through that thoracic spine. But another part of all this is, you know, that also gives us an idea of what muscles are working and what muscles aren't. And remember, it, each of the vertebrae we're talking about, those are actually bones, but in between those bones, there's discs. And those discs act as shock absorbers and they're they're the the things that allow us to kind of move more freely in areas that we're supposed to move and so you know when we start to have muscles and they're little bitty muscles that protect one vertebrae to another to another so basically think about really small muscles that you can't see because you can't see them people don't want to train them and those are the ones that are the most important because you're only as strong as you are stable so this week on Random Fit, we're talking about the spine and that it is more than just a stack of bones with myself, Wendy Batson, Ken Miller. And I think it's important. Vertebrae are important, but the discs that that um, are in between them, maintaining the, the integrity of those discs is also super important. And the reason when we're talking about those little muscles that protect the spine is if one of those gets to start to lock down or it starts to become overactive because of these really... Um, improper or faulty movement patterns that we do each and every day that starts to add that compression on one side of like of the vertebrae so one vertebrae that connects to another if you've got a tight muscle it starts to compress down onto that disc and so if you think of a jelly donut and you start compressing only on one side then eventually the jelly is going to come out the other end well that's the same thing that we're talking about when you're talking about discs and making sure and maintaining the health of your spine. And so what we want to think about is what's causing this lack of mobility? Where is the dysfunction happening? And then what if you're feeling some discomfort, you know, what are we doing to train the spine first? 
And often it's how many crunches can you do? You know, this can like, you know, yeah. Britney Spears, 500 sit-ups every single day. And you're going to have abs that look like, you know, amazing. Well, first of all, your diet's going to really dictate, you know, your six pack abs, um, as well as maintaining the integrity of your spine. But I mean, I know we're going to talk about this too, but on a corrective standpoint, doing exercises that don't flex, extend and rotate the spine to begin with, or what's going to help you be able to look the way you want to, but also help realign the spine appropriately. And obviously I'm super, super, um, um, like I, I find this to be very important because I had these issues and I neglected yeah. that and I don't want anyone else to go through what I went through. So personal experience. Well, so, and, and, yeah. And it doesn't take my, right. It just takes that little bout of pain that, that two to three days where you're just, you can't do what you love to do or want to do to make you realize, okay, well, something's got to change. Something has to happen for me to feel better. And when it comes to the spine, um, one of the things that, is part of the educational process is to realize, again, we talked about alternating uh, stability, mobility. And, and when you go up from the from the base of the skull to the lumbopelvic hip complex, the different roles and responsibilities of the spine, and we've, as we've already discussed some of them here on Random Fit with both Wendy Batts and I discussing, you know, discussing the spine, is that we, the different segments of the spine need different things, right? Even though they're all clumped into the same word spine, right? They, they have different responsibilities, which means we have to feed them quote air quotes there. We have to feed them differently. So if, if there's an area that that's responsible for stability, right? Which is basically the, the lumbar spine, again, going off, working off of uh, Greg Cook and Mike Boyle's model, lumbar spine and the lower segment of the cervical spine, we just have to make sure that those areas are strong as far as being able to control and stabilize. So um, when we when we just look at the, the body, the shape of the body, we have, you know, small ankles and then above it, we have big hips. And then right above the big hips, we have small waist and then big shoulders and then small neck and then a bigger big head above that. So you think you have a small waist. Yeah, I don't got a small waist. But we have I'm a. I've got a big head too. Or like yeah, okay. small neck, <laughs> big head, right? You got to think. Okay, my my waist again, relative <laughs> to the other body parts, right? They've got to support what's above it, right? So that that's where the that's where the roles and responsibility and stability have to come from. Because if I have this small base of my lumbar spine, and it's got a, you know, if I'm the spine, I'm looking up. I've got this rib cage, and I've got these broad shoulders, right? broad shoulders. I'll at least have that. You have your broad shoulders above. That's a lot for that to control. But again, with the with the lumbar spine, we have to think that that's the midsection of the body, right? That's the middle of the body. So there's a lot of force coming up from the ground and going down into the ground from the upper body, especially when we talk about gait. But I need to train the lumbar spine to be stable. And this is where we talk about doing things like bridges, planks, things that just teach those those small muscles, Wendy, that you talked about that connect vertebrae to vertebrae and they go up and down the spine. So we need to teach that area. So the lumbar spine, as well as the lower part of the cervical spine to be strong and stable, right? That anti-rotation, that anti-movement, that ability to control that intervertebral stability or to have that intervertebral stability, it's going to be that region of the spine's responsibility to have that so that the other areas can do what they need to do, which is, again, above the lumbar spine, the, th the thoracic spine, I give, if I'm the lumbar spine, I give the thoracic spine the ability to move about, rotate, turn, flex, and extend the more stable I am. And this is where we can start to have you know, mid back issues is that if I start to have low back instability, weak core, right? Air quotes there, right? Bad lumbar, lumbo pelvic uh, hip position, bad lumbar spine position, which means less thoracic movement. And again, leading up to the chain, which means more instability through the neck, um, which again, that's where stress will start to emanate. Yes. And, and if you're joining Ken Miller and I today on Random Fit, we're talking about the spine and that it is more than just a stack of bones. And again, we talked about the importance of understanding the different components of the spine, 
which ones should be more stable and which ones should be more mobile. But I think too, you know, when you know that you have something that maybe isn't feeling right, you know, I think you want to look at what are you doing to help maintain the health and the integrity of the spine. And as Ken mentioned, you know, we, we, we as trainers would tell you, look at exercises with little to no joint motion of the spine first, do the planks, the side planks, the pow off presses, the bridges, the things that that move together as one unit, because that starts to really protect those small muscles. Then after you've done this for four to six weeks and you're changing it out and you feel like you're getting stronger within those muscles, then you can start adding the the, the crunches and the sit ups and the side bends and the rotational movement, because those are the muscles that move the spine. And those are very important, too. But you want to think of them a little bit differently. You want to train them a little bit differently. And you want to start to, like we talked about, we're building strength within the spine, but we also want to work on mobility of that middle section or the thoracic spine area. And one of my all time favorite things, Ken, and I, I want to hear what you do with your clients, but I get them in like a, a tabletop. So you're face down mm -hmm. and they're on the forearms, like they're going to do a plank and they kind of push up and they sit back onto their heels. So their tush is laying on the back of their heels. They're pushing up into their shoulder blades. So they're trying to maintain a flat back. Again, working on that integrity that Ken was talking about with the shoulder blade lying flat on the rib cage. We're working on pushing through that, then putting one hand behind the head and then going elbow to ceiling and really trying to rotate through the thoracic spine and then doing things like open books, things that are really working on that segment of the spine that should be mobile. And, you know, that uh, that's a big eye opener when people can't do that. They cannot get their elbow up towards the ceiling by, main, you know, keeping their tush onto their heels. If they can't do that, that just shows that lack of thoracic spine. So so that's what I'm going to leave you with. I want you to try that. See where that mobility is, is or is not. And then keep working on that each and every day to try to work on that, you know, getting better rotation. Or if you have a long foam roller laying on it, you know, just between the bottom of the shoulder blade to the top of the shoulder blade with the hands behind the head. And then just allowing yourself to go over like head towards the ceiling or uh, towards the floor and then back up almost like you're doing a mini crunch over that. Those are two things that will allow you to get better mobility in that and something that you can do at home. It actually feels phenomenal and it will help, you know, open up that chest that's really tight during the day. And, um, and it's also going to help with you, um, you know, with the, the, the health of your spine, which as you have heard is super important. Yeah. And that's, that's a great sequence. So I, you know, as we've discussed, uh, in, in previous episodes, when it comes to extra exercises come in different names, you know, they'll be named after somebody Eastern Bloc country, maybe, or, or, or uh, you know, so when when I that that little rotation you talk about, Wendy, mm -hmm. I, I'll do that with a straight arm. So instead of the hand behind yeah. the head and rotating, I'll reach with a straight arm across and down and yeah. then with a straight arm up. So I'll call that a reach and pull. See, um, I call that a thread the needle. So just like you're going to thread the needle and then lift. Yep. <laughs> and then you lay on your back and now it's called an open book. Right. So it's yeah. right. You change body position, change the name. Um, but, but you can YouTube those. If you're not familiar with them, I'm yeah. asking you to YouTube them because, you know, thoracic mobility is super important. And so yeah. many people are lacking it. I see it time and time again. Yeah. Um, and especially when people are complaining about low back discomfort, you know, hips aren't moving and neither is the thoracic spine. And those are two key yeah. things that we can easily help someone with. Um, so help yeah. yourself. And yeah. And even working up the chain into the neck, sometimes, you know, I've been able to help clients, you know, relieve neck tension by working on the thoracic spine. Then the, mm -hmm. because the neck has to work more if the if the base under it is in a bad position. Mm -hmm. So if I'm slouched over, well, I still need to look at the horizon. I still need to look at my computer screen. So what what does that mean I have to do? I have to prop my head even higher, which puts even more stress and those nut muscles behind the neck. So, you know, I think one closing statement I'll say here is that when we when we talk about the spine, again, in the context of what we've brought some things up already in the in the cases of discomfort and pain, that's one way that helps people realize, okay, I need to do something about my spine or, or my posture. But if you're somebody who's a rotational athlete, doesn't even have to be a rotational athlete like a like a baseball player, a golfer, anybody who throws. 
but just to even just for wellness and better health, if I want to breathe well, if I want to, if I'm working on my breathing, um, I'm going to do that better with a more upright posture with more extension through the spine and not too much extension through the spine. Digestion is better when you have better posture, uh, more oxygen to the brain when we can get, you know, get the head more on top of the rib cage. So whether you're talking about post rehab or alleviating pain and discomfort, if you're talking about performance, if you're talking about health and wellness, a lot of that goes into, you know, looking at, okay, well, am I feeding the spine what it needs to function better? And again, when it comes to the spine, you have different sections that need different nutrient intake, if you will, when it comes to getting the most out of that section of the spine. So a lot of information downloaded on this is fine. <laughs> this, uh, you know, again, if I'm talking to my cousin about this who has business background, then I'll be like, that's a lot of information. But mm -hmm. if you're a fitness professional or an exerciser and you just think, okay, I need, I need to do hip stretches, I need to stretch my neck, and I need to do some rows, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, this was fun, Ken, and it was a lot of information, but I think it's important information because, I mean, you know, our spine is part of our health. You know, we start to lack and get our spine out of whack, our spinal cords there, and it's pretty yeah. much, you know, that's our roadmap. That, that's what gets us through the day. That helps us walk, function, breathe, eat, you know, sleep. And so okay. we want to make sure that the integrity of the spine is kept in a very, like, safe position. Yep. All of that. You. Yes. <laughs> All right. So for all of you that are listening to us here on Random Fit, thank you for your time and listening to this episode of Random Fit with Wendy Batts, as well as myself, Ken Miller, on this episode regarding the spine and being more than just a stack of bones. So if you like what you listen to here, please like, follow, subscribe, download, and more importantly, comment. Let us know what you want to listen to, and we'll do what we can to get you the episodes that you want to hear about. So thank you, everybody, again. And until next time, take care and be well.